Good day and welcome to HMI's podcast. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Professor John Tribe from the U University of Surrey, who is one of the world's leading experts on tourism. Professor Tribe, lovely to have you with us. Thank you, lovely to be here. Today tourism is expanding globally. Where do we see tourism going in the future? Uh, it's a very good question. The word tourism organization is constantly uh, projecting tourism to grow very fast. Um, uh, and probably faster than other sectors of the economy. Um, so we have to be a little bit careful about, um, about our expansion of tourism um, uh, and not overlook some, uh, some key issues, I think, for tourism. So tourism is a great force for, for, for the world. It's a great uh, force for economic development, uh, particularly for some less developed countries which have got fantastic tourism resources. So it's a real good force for economic development. But the major issues haven't gone away. The major issue, of course, still remains climate change. So, you know, in terms of green tourism, hotels have got very good at recycling their towels and one or two what you might call marginal things. But uh, the real big issue is still carbon emissions. And um, I don't really think that uh, the world has got on top of carbon emissions in a general sense or even in a tourism sense. So. There's going to have to be some big, big decisions and big policy changes um, over air transport uh, over the next few years. Now, at the moment, we're seeing um, economic recessions. We're seeing oil prices increasing. What, I what is the outlook for tourism? I think the outlook for tourism, um, it, it depends where you are, really. So um, oil prices are another very significant factor. So people talk about peak oil because currently we're in a bit of a recession and the notion of peak oil has slightly gone off the boil. But I think uh, peak oil is another, another serious issue. It means that oil prices are likely to spike and uh, high prices are likely to have an impact on, 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 on tourism. In terms of um, uh, the economic situation, well, that plays out in all sorts of different ways, of course. Um, there's a lot of talk about the global financial crisis, but uh, as I've often said, there's not a global financial crisis. The global financial crisis is really a crisis of uh, America and Europe. So the Chinese economy continues to grow. Uh, uh, tourism in China, and uh, Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific is continuing to grow. Uh, tourism in Europe is under a lot of pressure because um, there's less uh, disposable income in, in Europe. So there's a lot more people taking staycations. Um, um, but in a sense, uh, some countries should benefit from um, the economic climate. The UK should a little bit because its exchange rate has fallen. It's quite a cheap place to come to now, so come to the UK. According to the latest report put out about two weeks ago from the World Tourism Organization, mm. they are predicting that by the year 2020, there will be approximately 1.6 billion uh, travelers globally. What do we need to do to prepare for this mass increase? In well, we, we need to tourism. think. We need to think what that actually means. You know, I mean, uh, it's all very well to say that tourism is going to increase, but if we look at infrastructures, you know, I'm not sure if they're really always geared up to deal with uh, these these big increases. We always assume that big and, and a big increase is a good thing. It's not always a good thing. I mean, I think quality is is a significant issue, um, and I think that's a, a really interesting thing there because. I think we have to really be careful of the tourist experience. Um, and you can see lots of uh, times when the tourist experience isn't very good. I think the tourist experience at many airports is shocking. Um, I think the way budget airlines treat their tourists is shocking. They don't treat them like human beings. They treat them like animals. Um, and there's no need to do that. You could treat them in another way. I think that uh, immigration queues and check-in queues at airports are shocking because they're all predictable things. So uh, along with this massive increase in tourism, there's two, two big things, and I think we've discussed here, that we need to think about. We need to think about CO2 emissions. That's very, very serious, but we need to think about the tourist experience. We need to make sure that tourists um, aren't put off traveling um, before they even leave the country, you know, at their own airports, or as soon as they arrive at another airport. We could treat tourists a lot better, I think. Um, and that involves a little bit more investment in infrastructure, but just some good planning. You know, there's a, there's a sign at one of the London airports that says we have bigger security checks now, so you might expect to wait longer, 
Well, my answer to that is, no, I don't expect you to wait longer. I expect you to provide more people to provide those checks. You know, it's a crazy logic. <laughs> it's, it's interesting that you mention, you know, the long queues at airports. Today, a lot of airports around the world are installing new technology, you know, where you can do the e-check-in. Mm. Um, you know, and recently I was traveling and I had problems with the e-check-in. Mm. And I went to the check-in counter and she said, well, you know, you need to go to the e-check-in. And I said, well, it's not working. And you go to this counter and that counter. Today, there's also a lot of talk about interactive tourism. You know, where do you see the role of technology well, within te tourism? I mean, technology is going to have an in a continuing increasing large effect. I mean, in effectively, everyone's become their own travel agent now. They've become very good at it. And they've become very quick at becoming good at it. Um, and of course, everyone has a smartphone, you know, so I use my smartphone increasingly. I could do a little ad for British Airways here if I could get the app up quick enough, but I, I mean, I can check in, you know, I have yeah. my boarding card on my phone. But then, of course, when I'm traveling, I can press any of my apps, you know, what's around me, uh, and uh, I can see uh, some restaurants to go to. Uh, I can see how to get to, to places. So technology is going to have a huge uh, effect on, 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 on actually providing consumers with a lot more information and a lot more choice. So already we can see that technology has reduced prices because we have a fantastically good view of what prices are and so we compare and, we, 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 and, and therefore prices are competitive. Uh, and we have a lot more information about the tourist experience. So we have TripAdvisor and we have a lot of feedback mechanisms. So that gives consumers a huge amount of, uh, of extra information, possibly a little bit too much information because I'm sure you, like everyone else, have you know, started to look at the internet at 10 o'clock at night for some flights and then the next thing you know it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you still haven't decided. Correct. So uh, we can have too much information. But I think technology will continue to develop. I think mobile technology uh, was, is going to be the key to, uh, to how it develops. Yeah. What about social media? This year they coined the term the Facebook factor, mm. you know, where 52% of travelers are influenced by the positive and negative experience of their friends. Is this going to, are we going to see a bigger role of social media yeah, within uh, tourism in the future? I think so. I think, um, yeah, I think social media plays an important part. I was looking in a hotel lobby recently. I was in Portugal, and about 10 people had their laptops open. So I just looked past over everyone's shoulder, and everyone was tuned into Facebook. And I thought that was really <laughs> interesting. So there they are. They're on, on holiday or tuned into Facebook. But that might lead to what you might call the Facebook holiday as well, you know. Um, which is where you, you perhaps don't have a holiday for its own intrinsic, immediate enjoyment. Your holiday becomes a series of photo shoots, right. you know, so you take a little photograph of yourself like this, and then uh, and you send it off to your friends. And so your holiday just becomes a permanent PR exercise, you yeah. know, to enhance your, your personal brand. Well, I think that's possibly a little bit, uh, little bit worrying, you know. I think people need to enjoy the immediacy of holidays and not have a constant interruption of thinking where's the best photograph or where can I pose or, or am I trying to project an, un, an unreal kind of image of where I am, you know, right. always looking perfect and uh, always, always looking good. Earlier you mentioned carbon emissions, global warming, that's the hot topic today. Yeah, hot being the apt word, yeah. What do we really need to do, you know, to protect tourism in the future? Well, to, to, uh, uh, we, need, we need to do two things. So we need to protect our, our resources. So our resources are very important. So I'm just wandering around here in a beautiful Swiss valley, uh, and I'm thinking, well, I suppose the resources are quite nicely protected here. But on the other hand, the mountains are full of, <laughs> they're full of infrastructure of skiing, so that's a, that's, that's a bit ugly, I, I find, actually, funnily enough. So we need to protect our resources. That's very, very important. Uh, and, um, but in terms of carbon emissions, tourism is just a subset of the global economy. So that needs a world political decision. You know, someone, uh, there has to be a global agreement on carbon emissions. Europe's going it alone. I was listening to the Austrian uh, prem, uh, Prime Minister, uh, so Australian Prime Minister, talking about carbon emissions recently. There's a lot of criticism about Australia going it alone as well, in, internally. So it's very difficult to go alone, because if you go alone, then you still get polluted by other people's emissions. So it has yeah. to be a world solution that's absolutely vital. And it has to apply to air transport just as much as it applies to heavy industries, construction, and uh, uh, generation of electricity. In three weeks, they have the COP17 mm. climate change conference mm. in South Africa. Mm. Do you really think these climate change conferences, you know, 
actually plays a positive effect? Um, I think they're important, yeah. I mean, I think they're very important for, for bringing the issue back to the public attention. I, I, actually, one of the problems is that the public and the media are very cyclical and very kind of, they get very obsessed by things, you know. So at the moment, the media in the, in the West are very obsessed by the, the global financial crisis and the collapse of the euro. And in a sense, that's that sort of put, you know, CO2 right off the agenda. It hasn't been on the agenda for ages, so it's very important that it comes back on the agenda. So it's very important to have these mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, conferences. And it's very important that these put pressure on, on political leaders and that populations put pressure on their political leaders um, uh, to come to some agreement. Yeah. Just finally, if you could look into your crystal ball, mm. where, where, what do you see for tourism in the far future? Well, it's a very interesting question. Um, can it keep on expanding at the rate it's going at? That's very interesting uh, because we might we might run out of places. You know, I, I was speaking recently about the golden age of tourism, which we've just been through. The golden age of tourism is an age of peace and security. It's an age of cheap air travel. Uh, it's a, a, an age of uh, interesting and different places to go to. Um, I think we're passing. We're probably going to be passing into a new era. I mean, peace and security can't be taken for granted. We don't seem to be in a very peaceful era at the moment, so that might cause some problems. Uh, cheap transport is probably going to get out the window because of peak oil and uh, CO2 emissions. And maybe we're going to run out of new and interesting places. So I think the big danger is that uh, you know, the world just converges on, on the same things. And so we have a, a terrible globalization of place which all becomes merged into one. Is there a future for space tourism? Um, I'm sure there is, yeah. I'm sure there is. In our lifetime? Um, I'm probably a little bit older than you, so maybe <laughs> not in my lifetime. <laughs> well, Professor Trapp, it's been really great speaking with you. And thank nice you very to much for your time. Well. Great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.